Hello everyone, welcome to your study guide lesson 5-10. This lesson is found on page 117 of your study guide. Indirect measurement. When we talk about indirect measurements, we're going to look for the height of a statue. Simply by using the shadow of the statue, we will find its height. And we can use the same method to find the distance across a river. Please note this down. Okay, a quick review on vocabulary. Circle the vocabulary word defined below. Okay, figures that have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. Are they congruent figures or similar figures? Well, remember, congruent figures means it's all the same, right? Same angles uh, and same length of size. But similar means that it can, it, they're, they have the same shape but they're not necessarily the same size. So, yes, it is similar figures. Okay, let's make the real world link now. Shadows. Marita is five feet tall and casts, cast means to lay out a shadow, okay? The, the shadow that she makes, she launches a, a shadow. She casts a shadow that is seven and a half feet long. So she's five feet tall and her shadow is even longer. That means it's probably closer to the evening time. Jacob is six feet tall and casts a shadow that is nine feet long. Okay, so now we have to model the situation and with a labeled drawing. So now we have to actually draw it. For the sake of saving time and, and for better clarity, I'm going to use the drawing provided by the book. We know this is Marita. Marita is five feet tall. There she is. Okay, five feet tall. And she casts a shadow seven and a half feet long. And there's her shadow, which is seven and a half feet long. From her foot all the way up is 77. So the sun is probably over here somewhere and she's blocking the sunlight all the way to there. You see that? Okay, so there's her shadow, and there's how tall she is. That's Marita. And we look at Jacob, and Jacob is six feet tall. There he is, six feet tall. And he casts a shadow that is nine feet long. Again, the sun is probably somewhere over here, and he blocks the sunlight from the sun all the way to here to make the nine feet long shadow. So you need to draw something similar to this. Now, I don't mind if you just draw stick figures, okay? But make sure that you get your measurements correctly, the height and the shadow casted. Please make sure that you draw these. I will be looking for them as a key answer. Okay, let's, uh, question two, let's complete the uh, proportion. Okay, Marita's height, we said that Marita's height is five feet, correct? And Marita's shadow's length is seven and a half, so I'll write a mixed number there, seven and a half. Okay, and then we have Jacob's height right here. Jacob's height, we said he was six feet tall. And Jacob's uh, shadow casted is nine feet. Now, are these proportional? Let's just take a look for one second. To go from his height to his shadow, we're going up by 50% of this. 50% of three, sorry, 50% of six is three. So you see that we went up by three. Are we going up by 50% of five? Well, 50% of five is two and a half. If I add two and a half to five, do I get seven and a half? Yes. So they're both proportional. Okay, let's find the cross products. Now the cross product is six times seven and a half and five times nine. So my first cross product is five times nine. There it is, equals 45. And seven and a half times six equals 45 as well. Okay, because we know that six times seven right here is 42. And then what's a half of six is three. So 42 plus three is 45. And you can see that the cross products are equivalent, so it is proportional. What is, what is true about the cross product? What does this mean? Well, as we were just saying, the cross products are equal. They're both 45, right? So Marita's height and shadow length are proportional to Jacob's height and shadow length because they both got 45. Well, 45 and 45. So they are proportional. Now go ahead, pause the video, and copy that down. Now on the next page, we're going to find an indirect measurement, meaning we're going to find a measurement that is not directly provided for us, but we're going to use another measurement to, um, and its proportionality to find the missing measurement. This is called indirect measurement. A flagpole casts a shadow that is 30 feet, 32 feet long. At the same time, a shed that is 7 feet tall casts a shadow that is 17.5 feet long. Now, by with this ratio, we can find the height of the flagpole. We're, we're given the, the shadow 
and we're given the shadow here, and we're given the, 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 the height here, but we're not given the height there. These are equivalent ratios. So let's model the situation with the drawing. For our first drawing, we have the flagpole, and we don't know what the height is, so we're going to uh, identify that with x feet, x amount of feet. But we, we are told that it's 30 feet, 32 feet long shadow. There's our shadow. Our long shadow is 30 feet, 32 feet long. Now, please take a second to draw something similar to this. If you are considering becoming a civil engineer at some point in the future, or you do plan on building anything like a shed, um, any, any structure that you plan to build, you always have to draw something, so why not practice now? You never know, you might be really good at this and maybe something you'd like to uh, enhance or, or do even more in the future. So here we have now the shed. The shed is seven feet tall. There's our shed, okay, like a tool shed or a farm, barn, whatever we want to put there, our storage. It's seven feet tall. And it's casting a shadow that's 17 and a half feet long, as mentioned there. So go ahead and draw these two models so that we can visualize what we're working with. Okay, while you're drawing this, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the next question. Find the height of the flagpole. Well, I know that my flagpole is X, but I know that my shed is 7, right? And I know that my shadow for the flagpole is 32 feet, and the shadow for my shed is 17.5. Uh, you can go ahead and cross product. So I, now I have over here on the side, I'm going to have 17. 0.5x equals um, 32 times 7, or 7 times 32, which equals three. Uh, sorry, 224, 224. Okay. Always keep in mind you can use a calculator. Now let's isolate the variable. Okay, so we have to get rid of the 17.5. So let's bring it over to the other side, and it turns into a division. Okay, 17.5 on this side. We've got rid of it on this side. Remember, multiplication on one side becomes division on the other side. And now we divide. And I get x equals 12.8. So that is 12.8 feet, boys and girls, 12.8 feet. That's how tall our flagpole is right there. OK, go ahead and copy that down, please. And make sure that you show your cross product your um, isolation of the variable, your division, and your final answer. Please show all your work right below, okay? Or actually, on the left-hand side, you have this margin. Go ahead and you can use that margin to, to show your work on there, okay? Please, I will be looking for that. Okay, surveying models. Surveying, remember when we study the land, to survey the, the, the land and see it to find missing measurements. The triangles below are similar. Explain how you would find the distance from Springdale to Porter. Springdale to Porter. Then find the distance. So I see that over here from, from Springdale to uh, this point, not, not quite to Porter, I have 240 kilometers. Okay? But from Springdale to Cheswick, I have 268 kilometers. How do we find it, boys and girls? Let me give you a little hint. We can go ahead and ignore this 268, because that's not the side we're looking for. Okay? We understand that from here to here, we have 60. And from here to here, we have 82.5. There's our ratio. Okay? There's our increment on how much we increase. The smaller triangle has 240. Okay? If we increment this proportionally, the same way we incremented this to get here, we will get it. Okay? I hope that makes sense to you. So what we're looking at is something that looks like this. We have 60 uh, over 240, right? Which is this smaller triangle here. And then I know that, that 60 is proportional to the 82.5. And we're looking for our x. OK, our x is this entire line here. OK, we're looking for this entire line. We're not looking just for this little piece to add it. We want the entire thing. So your first step is to write a proportion comparing the, the, the triangles. So we did. We, this is the small triangle, right? 60 by 240. There it is, 60 by 240. And then the other triangle is 82.5 by a whole measurement that we don't know. So then we let x represent the distance from Springdale to Porter. Springdale to Porter. We don't know this whole distance here, so we're going to let x represent that. Then cross multiply and solve for x. Cross multiply, as we've done before. Then we solve for x. 
and I think some of you already noticed that x equals 330 kilometers okay, because everything's being measured in km, you see, kilometers and finally write a summary we know that we use similar figures right to identify to um, use indirect measurement to solve for a measurement that we didn't have we use um, proportionality and um, we identified ratios proportional ratios um, to and we drew models we drew models and identify and labeled the models okay all those stuff just look back in the lesson boys and girls and, and write down what you learn in this lesson. It's always good to reflect on what you've learned because it'll sink in a little bit more. All right, see you in class, everyone.